It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the South region. This is Fox Sports Outdoor South. Hi everybody, I'm so happy you joined us for this week's episode. It's really difficult to believe that we are already halfway through the 2014 season of Fox Sports Outdoors. And what a great half season it's been so far. We've traveled all the way from the southeast to the southwest. We fished for several different freshwater species, some saltwater fish as well. It's just been a great ride so far. But we realize that some of you may be new viewers to the show and may have missed some of that, or maybe you went on vacation for a couple of weeks. For whatever reason, if you miss one week of our show, you miss a lot. So we're going to take some time right here at the halfway point. Take a look back over our shoulders at some of the great highlights, some of the great fish catches, and some of the wonderful adventures that have happened on Fox Sports Outdoors so far this season. And maybe the best news of all is while we're doing that, we're going to be taking you around your local region for your fishing reports and lake reports from your lakes, rivers, and bays from our expert team of insider reporters. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stay with us. It's going to be an action-packed half hour. Right now, let's get this thing started back at the FSN studios with your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are projecting vastly different conditions for the two days this weekend. Saturday is listed as poor, while Sunday is predicted to have excellent conditions. Expect the best daylight action to begin on Sunday a couple of hours before sunrise and again in the afternoon around 5 o'clock. The sun will rise at 627 and set at 823. And evenings will feature a moon that is 36% visible. Stay with us, we have all of your fishing updates from around the southeast on the way. Plus, I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Tommy Biffle to answer your Ask the Pro question. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. By Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Everybody, welcome back to our mid-season half year in review episode, taking a look back at some of the best adventures, some of the best highlights and biggest fish that we've caught during the first half of our 2014 season. And did we ever get this season off to a rocking start? First of all, at Lake Fork, home of some of the best big bass fishing in the world, where we caught a huge bass. Following that, we went to Arbuckle Lake in the beautiful Arbuckle Mountains of South Central Oklahoma. I caught one of the biggest bass, not only in the history of this show, but in my 40 year professional fishing career. Let's take a look at these two big bass highlights. And following that, we get you to Tennessee and Kentucky with Crispin Powley and this week's fishing reports from there. That's easy 10 pound plus bass right there. That one hit a lizard, plastic biffalo lizard by Gene LaRue. Show you all the baits a little bit later. But how about that? There is a Lake Fork pig. That's what can happen when you come here and you're patient. Let's let that big dude go back. Look at this big dude. Big one. Oh man, look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at this giant pig. That's one of the biggest fish I've ever caught in my whole life. Unbelievable. Look at the size of that giant toad, will you? Holy mackerel. Man, welcome back everybody. Well, <laughs> this is what you come to Arbuckle for right here. It doesn't happen nearly every time. They are so hard to catch. But I finally got one of those to hit it. This is maybe the biggest bass of my life right here. 11 3. 11 pounds and three ounces. How about that folks? All right, we're gonna get this fish back in the water before we hurt her. That's why you come to Arbuckle Lake. Just like that. 
Hey guys, welcome to this week's fishing report for Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, you know, we're in the grips of summer right now. A lot of people would refer to it as the dog days. And, and it's notably the time of year where fishing is a little tough and it's no exception. I mean, you there are some good ways to catch fish right now in the Tennessee and Kentucky region, but by and large, it's early, it's late, or it's at night. Uh, the, the one upside to this time of year is the Tennessee River, which is the, the artery of all water in this part of the world, uh, the grass really, this is when it starts to come to the forefront and really emerge. And that's gonna, that's gonna become a really pivotal deal for the fishing this time of year on into the fall. Aside from that, the bass is still an early, late, or go at night kind of thing, and you catch them on a big spinner bait, and a, like black and blue jigs, and, and a 10 inch worm. The white bass bite, still really good on many, many area lakes. A little uh, spoon that you can cast a long ways, a little topwater bait, even a small running crankbait or a lipless crankbait is really, really good. Stay as far back as you can to keep from spooking them, but just right around early, right around late, look for the birds working, look for the fish breaking. Take a kid, take somebody, it's a blast. You can catch a bunch at one time. Aside from that, there's a pretty good catfish bite on the main river channel on the Cumberland and the Tennessee River, hearing really good reports from both bodies of water. Guys, just really just be careful on the water. There's a lot of recreational traffic this time of year. And if you go at night, be super prepared. It's, it's really dangerous when you add the element of darkness. Guys, can't wait to see you on the water in Tennessee and Kentucky. God bless. One of the things I've really enjoyed during the first half of this season is my first chance to give the Mercury four-stroke outboard engines a thorough test, both here on my Bass Tracker aluminum fishing boat and on my Mako saltwater rig. What great engines these are. As a matter of fact, I put together a video to explain to you some of the reasons why I love Mercury four-stroke outboard engines. And you can see that by going to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, clicking on the archived or past video section, clicking on the how-to videos, and you'll find the Mercury four-stroke video. Take a look at that. Right now, though, we're taking you to some more highlights, some more bass fishing. Hey, we had a great trip, first ever trip to Brandy Branch Lake, located in deep east Texas. Caught a big bass there. And then we went to Lay Lake over near Birmingham, Alabama. Had the wow. fortune of catching a big bass there as well. Take a look. Gene LaRue biffle bug right there, kind of a yellow bottom, black top, and it caught a big toad right there right off the bat. Man, it's got kind of a messed up place right there on her tail. Look at that. See right there, kind of a bloody spot right there. All right, we're on Brandy Branch Lake today talking power plant bass fishing. Look at this, big fish. That's a big bass right there. Big old Lay Lake bass. Look at this, holy mackerel. My first ever bass out of Lay Lake. And look at the size of this big toad. This is a whopper, all right. And that's Strike King KVD 2.5 crankbait, big square bill. And that's a big toad right there. Six five, six pounds and five ounces, how's that? That's a good bass for you right there. Had to stick it in the live well second, change the batteries in my in my scale. What a beautiful Lay Lake largemouth bass right there. We're gonna let that fish go back. Just go back in there, get on that grass bed again. Welcome back everybody to our mid-season half year in review episode on Fox Sports Outdoors. One of the things we've done in the first half of the season is some excellent crappie fishing, including learning some new techniques for catching big crappie. These techniques are called long lining, spider rigging, and pulling cranks. We showed those to you on various episodes. If you miss those, you can watch all of those on our brand new archived episode page at foxsportsoutdoors.com. We caught some giant crappie at Little Washington Lake just off the Mississippi River near Greenville, Mississippi. We also caught some big ones at Navarro Mills Lake in East Central Texas. Hold Take a look at crappie. those highlights and following that, get we get you to the Carolinas for your fishing reports oh, for this, this week from Inglis Glover. 
my first Mississippi crappie. Look at that. That's a fat pig right there. <laughs> what a great crappie. That's going to be a, man, I don't know. That's probably close to a two pound crappie for my very first one right there. Let him go back. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. Got him. Oh yeah, look at that toad. All right. That, my friend, is a good frying size crappie right there. Look at that big dude. Ha <laughs> ha! Beautiful crappie right there. We've had a good day today. Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolinas Report. This week brought to you by Marshalls Marine. Located in Lake City in Georgetown, South Carolina, we're your bass boat leader since 1969. For all your nitro and bass tracker needs and for family friendly fun, visit www.marshallsmarine.com. And I'll tell you right now, the heat continues to roll on as the summer moves on, but don't let that keep you in the air conditioning. Get out and target your species early in the morning, late in the afternoon. A couple quick tips. If you're going to concentrate on largemouth bass right now in the Carolinas, be sure to set up on rocky points with some deeper water. Crankbaits, spinnerbaits, and jigs are sure to land you some wonderful largemouth this time of the year. And as for the panfish all through the Carolinas, concentrate on those deeper brush piles this time of the year for crappie and brim, and also along those bigger, deeper dock pilings and piers with red worms. And also for the crappie, use those live minnows, even medium and large, to catch some of the biggest crappie of the season. The catfish at night has been incredible all through the Carolinas, coming up into the shallow waters. Get ready for some exciting fishing action and some top water action on catfish this time of the year. Moving along to the saltwater side of things where also we're starting to feel the heat as well. Get up in the water, get out there early, look for that top water trout bite, the top water bluefish, ladyfish, and jacks. It's some exciting action and also the tarpon are still continuing to move into the jetties and the estuaries throughout the Carolinas. And be sure to be patient, get out and catch one of those silver kings to add to your bucket list. This has been your Carolinas Report this week brought to you by Marshalls Marine. I'm Captain E and remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Before we get into the next break, I want to show you some highlights from our first trip to Kentucky Lake in Tennessee. Crispin Powley, our Southeast reporter, joined us for the action and we caught some great bass. And I've got to tell you this now, this is my first time to throw this big old crankbait. I am so impressed. That is such a blast. Strike King 10XD, catching good ones like that. We pulled out here on a ledge. Look and look what we've done. Two, two fish. Bring him around here. Yeah, he's, he's got a bad eye. Yeah, he does. Two decent fish right off the bat. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Welcome to the big league. Welcome back to the show. We're taking a look back this week at some of the best fishing highlights from the first half of our 2014 season. We work very hard on Fox Sports Outdoors to bring you a good representation of the game fish species that swim in the south and southwest regions. And no show would be complete without a good representation of white bass, stripers, and hybrid stripers. And we've caught all three in the first half of the year. Sabine River in East Texas swim some of the largest white bass anywhere in the United States, and it was our first trip there. Followed that up with a trip to Lake Texoma and showed you a brand new technique for catching stripers. Following that, we showed you how to catch hybrid stripers from Cedar Creek Lake in East Texas. Take a look at those, and following that, we'll be taking you to Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia with your saltwater fishing reports with Bob McNally, followed by There's Jimmy Jacobs in freshwater catching these big old spawning female white bass on their migration run up the river. There. Man, there's a good start right there. Big, fat, spawning female right there. Way up there shallow. Look at him up on top. Wow. There we go. Hey, look at that big pig. I'm going to stick this fish on the scale just to give you some idea of how big these fish are in this lake. 12 pounds and four ounces. How about that? Whoa, that's a freight train. That big boy. All right. 
there we go classic hybrid right there just a good chunky stocky fish right there boy they will fight you saw how that thing cut up on top away he goes this part of the program is brought to you by egret baits makers of the new voodoo shrimp that voodoo shrimp is so realistic every time i see one i want to dip it in cocktail sauce and take a bite out of it so pick up a new voodoo shrimp and put them where the fish are they'll do the rest well saltwater fishing continues to be just about as hot as the weather throughout much of the coastal south I was talking to my good friend Jake Marcus over in uh, Mobile, Alabama, and he's been catching four to five pound trout, freelining live shrimp with his family around oil platforms. Uh, he says the bite's not real fast, and you've got to stay with it, but if you fish those rock hard bottom areas around the oil platforms with good, frisky, large live shrimp, you'll do well. And if you can't catch them during, that, during the daylight hours, don't hesitate to go out there at night or really early in the morning and stay until the sun starts to rise. That's a good way to get a cool bite and be on the water too. Uh, over in Mississippi, uh, the flounder fishing continues very good along the bay front. Uh, there have been some fish to about three pounds caught. And the triple tail in Mississippi, fishing there has been great. They're around the crab trap floats and they're also around the channel markers and, and uh, edges of the deeper waters. Just find some floats them and look for triple tail, put a live shrimp or a voodoo shrimp with a popping cork near them and they should probably hit it. And the big news is over in Georgia, is sharks. There are so many black tip and spinner sharks, it's scary behind the shrimp boats trawling. Uh, they tend to be a little bit north of the Gold Niles, uh, north of St. Simons. Uh, they're also catching some nice triple tail in Georgia, and angler Clay Strother out of St. Simons Island recently had a 22 and a half pounder. That's a world-class triple tail. So that's it for the Coastal Southeast Fishing Report. So get out there in the water, and when you go, take a youngster with you. Welcome to the Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi Freshwater Fishing Report. This week's coverage is sponsored by Hiking Georgia, a guide to the state's greatest hiking adventures. The new fourth edition of the book is loaded with color maps and photos that bring the 79 featured trails in the Peach State alive. The book is available online at jimmyjacobsoutdoors.com. We've now reached the end of July and the bass fishing is slowing down across the region, but there's still a few places where you can find some action. In Alabama, one of these is Warrior Reservoir. It's on the Black Warrior River just to the south of Tuscaloosa. This 8,580 acre impoundment is riverine in nature and has few backwater areas, but that current coming through keeps the water slightly cooler than in a lot of reservoirs. Now the lake is known for giving up numbers of smaller bass, but there'll be some, a few lunkers in there too. Best time to be fishing is early in the morning when there's a topwater bite right now. Target the weed beds below Oliver Dam in the upper end of the lake or you can try around the fish attractors in Brush Creek arm of the lake that's just east of the town of Utah. In Mississippi, Lake Okatibi is northwest of Meridian in the east central portion of the state. This is a shallow 4,144 acre impoundment. It has very little structure on the bottom, so if you can find logs or brush along the old creek channel, that's where the bass will be. Best fishing is in the south end of the lake near the dam. You want to throw spinner baits, around the old creek channel in that area. Or you can try bumping the bottom with a crankbait. In northwest Georgia, the catfish action for channel cats is heating up on Carter's Lake. This is a steep, rocky shored mountain lake, and the place you want to fish are around the crevices in those rocks. Most of these catfish will average about one pound, but that's ideal size for a fish fry. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. By Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. By Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. And by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. Welcome back everyone. It's time now for the Ask the Pro question. Your chance for advice from professional anglers. This week, Mike writes, how important is the number of ball bearings when purchasing a spinning reel? For the answer, we checked with Bassmaster Angler, Tommy Bill. Really, the average uh, ball bearings in a reel would probably be six to eight or something, but uh, you know, I think it's more the quality instead of the number of ball bearings. You get a, a reel that's really smooth and, and casts really good, uh, the number of ball bearings is probably not the deal, it's the quality of the ball bearing that they're putting in the reels. Thanks, Tommy. If you have a question to ask one of the pros, go to our website, follow the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. 
Now let's find out which big fish photo wins someone a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. If you're new to our show, we have a Costa Catch of the Week contest where each week, one of our viewers from our South and Southwest regions each win a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses. This week's winner is Nicholas Zabo of Atlanta, Georgia, showing a 21 pound striped bass he caught out of Lake Lanier in Georgia. If you would like to enter our contest and have a chance to win your own pair of Costa sunglasses, go to our website and click in the Costa Catch of the Week area, send us your big fish photo and you'll be in the running. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles at their website. Again, go to the front page of our website, click on the Costa logo and you can see them all there, including frame and lens styles that I'm wearing on this week's episode called Switchfoot. Next up on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, Motor Guide has come out with a brand new series of trolling motors in the lower thrust called the X3. And then for your larger boats and the Wi-Fi models, it's the XI5. You can see lots more about these brand new trolling motors just introduced to the marketplace by going to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Click on the videos archive and go to the how to video section. You can see one video that I did on the X3s introducing you to this line of motors and another on the XI5 wireless trolling motors. Check them out. One of the things that happened during the first half of this season on Fox Sports Outdoors is that our Southeast reporter for the Carolinas, Inglis Glover, took a bunch of veterans fishing on his boat. They had a great day and a lot of fun fishing and did a feature here on the show. Also one of our sponsor partners on the show, Lou's Fishing Rods and Reels, has a new program called American Hero, where when you purchase certain products with the American Hero logo, they contribute fishing tackle and equipment to help take our returning veterans fishing. We have lots of veterans, both men and women, that watch our show here on Fox Sports Outdoors. We hear from you folks regularly via email, Twitter, and Facebook. And to you folks, we say thank you very much for a job well done and for making our nation the free country that it is. Our freedoms are thanks to people just like you. Hey, don't forget that you can see lots more content, videos, photos, and fishing news and information in several places. First of all, at our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. You can always see the latest episode 24 seven right on the front page. You can also catch lots of information on our Twitter feed. We put lots of good information up on a daily and weekly basis. We still have our Facebook page up. You can get lots of information there and you can sign up for our free weekly newsletter. You can do that on the front page of our website. Hey, don't forget to join us next week. We'll be on Thursday at 6 p.m. with the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Till then, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.